Today I'm back to show you some more of my favorite Canva tips and tricks I can't live without. These are new and updated ones which I haven't really covered in my previous videos. Ready to get more efficient and discover some new possibilities? Let's do this! Hi my lovely people, it's Natalia and welcome back to my channel where I share super action ideas on content creation for entrepreneurs and creatives. And today we have an exciting video. I always get tons of comments and messages about how much you enjoyed my Canva tips, so I have some more super useful ones in store for you and I'm very excited to share them today. If you haven't seen the first video on tips and tricks in Canva that everyone should know, make sure to watch it next, link in the description of course, and you will see it here too. With these tricks you will be much more efficient and discover some less known Canva functionalities which can unlock new possibilities for promoting your business and presenting your work. Some of the tips I share with you today are available for free users only while others may require a pro account. Ultimately it's your decision whether or not to use a paid version but I highly recommend you do opt for the pro account just because it adds another layer of efficiency to the designing process. You can check out the link in the description box for a free 30 day trial for Canva Pro and at the moment they're running a promotion which they allow you to actually add five people to your team for the price of one. Normally you would have to pay for each member so it's definitely a great opportunity. From today I'll also start doing shout outs so if you'd like to be mentioned in my next video screenshot this one and share it on your IG story. And remember to hit a notification bell as well or you might not see my new videos. Okay enough with the talking let's jump straight to Canva. Tip number one, embed social posts and videos. Now, you know how popular the Twitter style posts are on Instagram? Well, apart from using templates from the Canva library, which some of them are pro templates, you can actually repurpose your existing tweets or other social media posts with just one click from within Canva. So if you go to the left panel in here, scroll all the way down and hit more, you'll see this little icon in here, which is embeds. And you can see a wide array of different platforms that you can pull your social posts from. And this way, it's just with one click, it goes to your design. So let me just delete everything that I've got in here. If you click on Twitter in here, it will show you an example of what that looks like. Uh, and I just have a link in here to my post, so you can just paste it in there, hit add to design and Canva just pulls that post for you straight away. And the fun thing is, of course, this will be used for Instagram, but if you wanted to embed your posts into a PDF to make it interactive as well, so this actually links up to that post. If I just double click on it, um, it will open up another post, so it will open up that post in another tab. So a great way to use your existing social media posts or any other resources that you've posted on different platforms without the hassle of actually having to screenshot them, upload them to Canva and then crop and add to the design. Tip number two, embed designs in blog posts. So to stay on the subject of embedding, did you know that you can also embed your designs on a website? It can be super useful for showcasing your templates or as a presentation for example. To do this once you have a design ready type in embed in the top right corner in here just like that and as you can see you can either choose a smart embed link which is supported on some platforms like WordPress for example or an HTML embed code and I'm just going to show you what it looks like in a random blog post that I've been embedded on my website. This is it you can just watch the whole video from here or you can actually double click on it and it will open up another presentation here in full screen. So quite a cool feature if you're selling templates for example, if you're a graphic designer that utilizes Canva or if you are embedding some presentations or ebooks that you've actually created in Canva. Tip number three, edit PDFs. This feature is still in beta but it's certainly a very exciting development from Canva. Do you know that you can now upload your flat PDFs and edit them from within Canva? Honestly that's so cool. To do that you can go to create a design in here and then hit import PDF. Now I'm just going to choose a random file from here and now it's uploading. It takes a while depending on how many pages there are in the document and sometimes if it's too big of a document it won't actually open it but let's hit that you'll see what it does. It was a completely flat PDF and you couldn't select anything, you couldn't edit any of the images but you can see now that Canva's done that for you so it identified all those different text boxes. Granted there are some parts that are not ideal that you would need to be clear cleared out a little bit but if you scroll down and look at it it's pretty good actually. In here for example you have an image it's actually transparent as well so 
you know, quite cool that it's actually doable from Canva and hopefully they develop this feature even more. You have a feedback form in here that you can fill every time and this way they can identify what went wrong and improve that. Tip number four, paste stuff over from another design. This is something I get asked about often during my consultations and for some reason not many people know about this. So I'm going to ask you, did you know that this feature exists? Let me know down below in the comment section. And in the meantime, to paste stuff over from another design. So I have a blank page in here. I have another design from Canva opened in another window. I can just select everything, hit Control or Command C to copy it, then go back to this design, hit Control or Command V to paste it. And you can see that this appears in here, no fuss, copied from another design. So you don't need to go back and recreate anything that you've created before. Tip number five, paste whole pages between designs. Now, speaking of pasting things over, it's now possible to copy and paste entire pages over to another design. It's a very recent feature released by Canva and it certainly makes designing so much quicker. And sometimes when you create a lot of presentations or you have similar slides on your Instagram carousel, you need to move over whole pages and now it's as easy as going to your page view here in the bottom, selecting the pages you want in here, hitting Control C, again or command C and then going to another presentation and hitting control V and this way all your pages appear in here you don't need to copy certain elements over whole pages and that's you sorted tip number six create graphs very often when you're giving presentations and where you're creating informative carousels for Instagram, you need to showcase some data. And of course, a classic table is the obvious choice, but it's not that attractive. To do this, go to left panel to more and hit charts. And you have all the different options to represent your data. And you can either enter your own data manually, or if you have an Excel spreadsheet with data in it, you can just copy that over to Canva and it does the job for you. And of course, it wouldn't be a graphic design tool if you weren't able to adjust some basic things like colors or fonts that you can change from here. Tip seven, create a pop-out effect. That's quite a fun effect that you can easily create in Canva and it works for profile photos as well as fun interactive images. So let me show you how it's done. Now, first of all, you need to make sure to have a photo that actually is able to be transformed into that pop-out effect. I have this ballet dancer in here. And now the next thing I want to use is that Instagram frame. If you go to elements and search for Instagram frame, this is what will pop up for you. And now I'm going to just place it where I want it so that the hands can stick out. I've made it a little bit smaller. So the next thing I want to do is to hit that image again. I will change the transparency so that I can see exactly where I want to put it because we want to put it on top of that image to directly correspond to the image that I've put in the background. And now I'm just going to stretch it out to make sure that it fits. And you can see that it's nearly, nearly there. Play around with the size a little bit, just like that. Perfect. Great, so she's in position just now. I'm going to quickly crop the image like this, just so it doesn't pop into the background for me. And now I can just change the transparency back to 100%. The next thing you want to do is to actually go to edit image and go to background remover. Fantastic, so now this is removed. So you have just that ballet dancer in here. I'll put her in position as I did before. And now of course we want to create that pop out effect. So I need to crop that image on top just to be able to remove that bit that I want hidden underneath that frame. So I'll just make sure that I crop to this line in here, just like that and that's cropped out and you have a fun effect like this. I've done the same thing with this image, exactly the same process. So add an image to the background, then add a frame, have another image on top of it, perfectly position it, edit it, cut the background and then crop it so that it stays in place properly. And this is another effect that I've done and when I was talking about the profile pictures, this is another effect that you can use to create more kind of fun interactive profile photos or little kind of bubbles that you would include in your PDFs, let's say. So it's a very similar thing that I've done in here. I've grouped the whole thing so you can move it, but you can actually see that this is just a cutout that I've created. And then another one was the image inserted into a frame actually. So I've just combined the three with the method above in here and this is what it looks like. 
Tip number eight, make your elements the same size. Now, again, I do consultations regularly, those on Canva included, and this is something I notice people often struggle with, so I definitely wanted to add it to my tip list. If you want to make all of the different icons the same size or different elements, I'm just going to opt for social icons because it's the easiest. I'm just going to choose a few from the magic recommendations in here. What you want to do is to make sure that they all kind of come in the same place. I'm just going to stack them all together just like that on top of each other and you can see that Canva straight away shows you all those different lines and these dashed lines and that means that all of them are in the same position and now we can just make them smaller and this way you have all the icons in the size that you want them. Tip number nine, use new shortcuts. In my previous Canva tips and tricks video, I've shared some shortcuts with you to speed up your whole workflow. And if you're using some of the shapes quite regularly, I have some new really cool ones to share with you. Now, if you want to add a circle, simply hit C and that will pop up a circle for you. Now, another one is R for rectangle. This pops up a square, but of course you can make it uh, work as a rectangle as well. Or you can hit L and that will add a line just like this. And another tip that you really liked from the previous video was the tidy up feature, which normally is in the position and then tidy up if you have three or more elements. Now, if I select all of these, you can simply hit Alt Shift T and this will tidy them up for you. Again, another speed up to your whole uh, process. And now another thing, if you want to group all of the images, you can go to group in here, or you can simply go Control or Command G and that will group them all. And now if you want to ungroup them, you can go Shift Control G and that will ungroup them for you very quickly. Tip number 10, speed up your workflow with integration. Not sure if you realize this, but Canva has quite a few useful integrations that can help with your workflow and frankly make your life that much easier. I personally use it all the time to save my design straight to MailChimp without having to download anything and then upload it there from my drive. And they land in my newsletters with no hassle and then in your inbox. Shameless plug here, if you want to hear more from me, make sure to subscribe to that newsletter because I share more of my business journey there and let you know when I publish a video as well. But now back to the integrations, there are so many other options. You can save your designs to OneDrive, Dropbox, or Google Drive, add a map from Google Maps to your design, which is such a cool option when, for example, you're creating an informative PDF itinerary. You can also share your designs on Slack with your team. I'm all about improving your systems and making sure you're that much more efficient and it definitely helps when you have so many integrations available from within Canva. To check them all out, open canva.com in your browser, make sure you're logged in and then under this features tabs, you have the apps tab. So click on it and you can browse some of the things that Canva has available or search in the bar if you have something specific in mind. Tip number 11, search through your designs quickly. Can I just say one thing? I absolutely hate it having to scroll through hundreds of designs just to find something I needed. And this was one annoying thing that really bugged me in Canva on a daily basis. Well, this now has been solved, but not many people are aware of it, so I'm here to share. Hopefully it will save you some headache. So if you search in the top bar for something in particular, nor normally it would show you some of the templates. But now if I want to go for my mock-up design. I know this is something that I named one of my designs. In here, apart from the templates, you have your designs tab and this actually browses through all of your different designs and you can have yours here. Tip number 12, create a GIF. GIFs are an interesting way to add a fun visual representation of what you're talking about, whether you're sending out a newsletter, making your Q and A's on Instagram stories a bit more fun, or having your otherwise static presentations come to life. And there's a quick and easy way to create your own GIFs in Canva too. Now I have this random perfume bottle. You can use whatever element you want. You can use your product. You can use all the different things, but just for the purpose of this presentation, First thing you want to do is to go to animate um, and just create some sort of an animation. We're going to actually change it in a moment, but the thing I want at this moment is to change the timing to 0 0.1. And this will become very important in a moment. This just enables that video feature that allows you to actually kind of create that GIF. So I'll, I'm going to go back to the animations and select none so it doesn't animate actually. And the first thing I want to do is to just skew it a little bit. Again, any motion that you want to do, you'll see what I want to do with this one later on, 
but at the moment I'm just going to use this one. Now I'm going to duplicate the page from here at the top and skew this perfume image to nine uh, degrees just that it it's consistent between the two. I can just go to grid like this and just select both of these pages. Remember I shown you that you can actually kind of copy whole pages just now. And I'm going to just pop them in here and create a few other ones like this. So just like that, I'm going to keep adding. Let's say I want round 12. And now what you can do is to go to download, hit GIF, um, all the pages and then download from here. And now, as you can see, I've opened that GIF up, just a random movement in here, but this is the way you can create various different GIFs through the various different types of movement. You can do rotation, you can do so many different things, but it's very easy to do in Canva. Tip 13, access cutout images. You may not know this, but there are plenty of photos with no background in the Canva library already. And this can really transform an otherwise flat design and help you create seamless carousels for Instagram, which I've shown in one of my videos, or even recreate flat lace yourself. And to do this, what you want to do is to go to elements and search for cutout or PNG. And you can often get different results with both cutout and PNG. So if you're looking for something specific, search both ways and see what you like. So as you can see in here, I've created this image, just a white background, and these are all cutout images that I've introduced, included in here. Some of them have shadows already. Some of them you can add shadows later on, which I'll be covering later in this video so stay tuned and if you search for PNG you have all the different options in here as well you can see another mug with some coffee in here so I could swap that out that one out and this was actually a backdrop that I've created for one of my videos on um, Instagram so it's very useful very useful if you're trying to search for particular things again for Instagram carousels as well so really good but that's not all if you have a pro account you can easily create your own cutout images by using the remove background function so if you're planning on creating a flat lay just search for a flat lay photo or upload one of yours and I have this planner in here in the uploads so if you just go to edit image in here hit background remover Canva will automatically remove the background for you and will create that cutout effect and this is why I've used to actually create that little edge in here that little corner so I'm going to just remove it they can see that this is the planner in here and it created a bit more dimension with what I was going for tip 14 make your own Instagram story stickers now another fun way to use these cutout images is to add them as stickers to your regular Instagram stories if you have the Canva app on your phone it's super easy to use it on the go so say you're planning talking about bouquets in your stories you can have a few different ones cut out save it without a background to your camera roll and then record yourself and use them as stickers to visualize what you're talking about and it works for many different products items or can even serve as a decoration to make your story stand out a little bit more and you can think Think creatively maybe you can design some personalized stickers to say hi or thank you to your followers so I have the sticker in here prepared so I can just go in here to save it to my role hit PNG transparent background and select page 5 because that's the only one that I want to download once I hit download I'll have it saved to my camera roll and we can go straight to our stories with it so now that you're in your stories, you can start um, talking about the bouquets and different things that you want to mention. Let's finish recording in here. And here at the top, you've got the different stickers. And if you scroll down a little bit, you've got this sticker in here, which means you can grab something from your photos and actually just apply it to your story. So let's hit that in here and select this from the camera roll. And as you can see, I can just add that in here and I can play around, make it a bit nicer, you know, add some um, different design elements, but this is how you would add stickers to your stories to make them more interesting. And they can also not only just show something that you're talking about, but they can serve as decoration as well. So as you can see, I've added my sticker in here. I've added a few different elements just from my text tools within Instagram to make it a bit more branded and my story is ready to be posted. Tip 15, create mock-ups. Mock-ups are a wonderful way to make a design come to life and Canva lets you do it quite easily from within the app. There are actually a few ways to create a mock-up in Canva, so let me show you how it's done. So method one is using frames. To create a mock-up using a frame, you can go to elements in here, go to frames. If you scroll down, you'll see the frames in here. And as you can see, you've got a phone, you've got a laptop and you have a screen. And for this one, let me just pop it on top of the 
screen in here just like that and if you go to some of the photos for example let me just choose a random photo like this you can just put it inside and this is what it looks like and the second method is using cutouts. So this is where the cutouts from my previous tip come into play as well. As an example, if you search for an iPhone mock-up in photos, you'll find a few options. So I've got this one in here. We want something flat because we won't be able to change perspective on the images. So let's choose this basic iPhone cutout in here. I want to include an Instagram screenshot. So let's pull it up from the uploads and let's place it underneath and voila, here's our mock-up. We can select the two, group them and move them around easily like this. So the third method is using smart mock-ups and there are quite a few integrations with third-party apps in Canva and smart mock-ups is one of them. And with this method, you'll need an account with them and it is a paid service, but if you use a lot of mock-ups, smart mock-ups might be a great option for you. So I have an invitation design in here and what you want to do next is to go to the search bar in here and let's type in smart mock-ups. I already have an account connected, but you can do it from within Canva easily. It's just a straightforward login page. So let's save the image in there and that will save it straight in Smart Mockups. So let's go to Smart Mockups and choose a design. You can go to all mockups in here and simply search for something that you like. So I'll go for invitation. You can scroll down and as you can see, there are plenty of different options for you. I'm looking for specific dimensions. So I actually like this one quite a lot. So from here, you can actually hit upload from, hit Canva. And as you can see, you will have the published designs in here. So let's select this one, crop and continue because it matches the size. Perfect. So this is what it looks like when you can just download it. I'll choose a super high resolution just because I want the best quality possible and it will save as a PNG. We can then go to uploads, hit upload media. I'll choose device and let me just choose that image. Now we have our beautiful image from Smart Mockups and I can just integrate it within my design. And just like that, you have another mockup ready. Tip 16, add glow, shadow or stroke. Now, this is an image that I've actually removed a, a background from. So if you click on that image, hit edit image, I have it in the recently used, but if you scroll down, go to shadows, you have a few different options in here. So you can add a glow, and this is how you would add that glow that I mentioned before, and you can add a drop shadow as well. So if you click on it and then click again, you'll be able to actually change some of the settings to achieve the look that you want to achieve. So you can change the transparency, which makes it kind of more or less visible. Um, I would add a bit of blur for this one, and you can even change the color of that one just to blend in with the background a little bit better. I'll go for this one and you can offset it a little bit more. You can create a kind of a different angle as well. So all the different options just to apply that little um, shadow in here. To try this glow option, again, go to edit image, scroll down and choose the first one just in here. Click again for the settings and you can choose the glow to be whatever different color you want. You can kind of play around with the settings in here. I'll maybe go for this white one in here, just like that, just so you can see it. And you can see that there is a bit of a glow appearing around the image. You can make it less or more transparent, just like that. And you can make it blurry. So it creates that nice separation from the background for you. And the third effect you can achieve is to actually go for a full stroke around your image. So if you go to that glow again, I'll choose a wide background, transparency high. I want the size to be quite big actually. And I don't want any blur with this one whatsoever. And that will create that stroke around an image. Very popular with kind of YouTube thumbnails, things of that nature. Again, if you want a bit of a cutout effect with this one, that's a great option. Tip number 17, make your own product backgrounds. When you're selling physical products, you can sometimes get bored of the photos you already have of them and may want to present them in a fun way. So did you know that you can search for the term product display background in the elements tab to find great backdrops? So in order to do that, product display background, go to photos and you can see so many different options to display your own products. So let's say I have a photo of some of the products I could potentially be selling in here. What you can do is to just place them in here and you have a fun way to present your product. You can add some text over it, make a little ad even. So, so many great options in here. 
go and play with that option if you sell physical products. Tip 18, stay on brand with Instagram stories. This one is one of my favorite Canva Plus Instagram tips and something I've been using for a long, long time to keep a consistent image on various profiles. So you know how I told you to save your Canva stickers in a folder on your phone and you can add them to your stories? Well, if you create your own color palette image in Canva and save it there as well, you can have all your brand colors available at hand every time you want to post a story. Now, once you have your story recorded, what you want to do is to go back to that sticker that I've shown you before, just like this, add your color palette. And this way, if you choose like a text, let's say, hey there, just like this. And the thing that you can do, if you go to color, choose a color picker, this is how you can stay on brand and keep your text boxes just as you want them. And you can create the same thing with these kind of different uh, scribble effects. So I can choose the, the pink one and create it that way. So then once you're done, you can just remove that photo and you're sorted, you're staying on brand in your stories. Tip 19, apply branding instantly. If you're a Canva Pro user, you get access to a brand kit which allows you to gather all your brand assets in one place and access them easily when designing so you can see it from the homepage in the left panel in the brand kit. When you're not using your own templates but don't want to waste time manually changing all the fonts and colors to match your branding, there is a quick hack to efficiently transform a Canva template. So to do this, I have a template in here like this. If you go to more, and hit styles. This way you'll be able to see all your brand kit assets in here. The first thing I want to do is to change my font. So if I simply click on that button in here, Canva already applied my fonts to this design. The next thing you can do is to shuffle through your main color palette. And this way you'll see all your brand colors applied in different ways and you can find something that suits your needs. And you can do that for all the different pages and you don't have to worry about clicking on every single element or every single item and changing it. Tip number 20, use video timelines. Now that's the latest development from Canva and shows that video editing is what they have their minds on. Now in the video mode, you actually have a timeline in here where you can edit your individual slides or clips and you can actually add transitions. Granted, these are still fairly basic and I would say they work best for a presentation style video, but here's hoping that there's more in store for us from Canva. You can change it to dissolve, you can make a slide, you can circle wipe or line wipe and you can change direction or even the duration of the transition itself. And this is how you change the clip duration as well. Have you discovered something new and exciting today? Jump to the comment section quickly and let me know which tip was your favorite. Now, if you want more great tips, check out the first installment of the Canva tips and tricks. And for more quick Canva tutorials, head on over to this playlist and see what you can create yourself. As always, I'm so happy to have you all here and I'm so grateful for all your lovely comments and messages. And if there's anything you'd like me to cover, you can DM me and I'll make sure to add it to my video ideas list. And of course, don't forget to share this video in your Instagram stories for a chance to get a shout out in my next video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. Have a lovely day and I'll see you next time.